get stuck on something on a falling tide, that's the worst time to be stuck because you may be there a while. And even though it's getting cooler weather, no sims are still out there. <laughs> any questions? Anybody got any questions about this? Yes, sir. Uh, you've got a house bay that floods at 5. I've got a golf that floods at about 9. Are all these areas half channels? Yeah, they do. And that's the best okay, time to so go you out. You, you go out and on. ease around whenever. This area where I'm at, get a chance to stay safe, where, where I'm at, it's going to be pretty hard for you to get a gauze. You know, you're going to have to idle in there and take it easy, you know, and learn the area. But what I do is, now your boat, if a crab trap is completely sunk, if, if none of the trap is exposed, you can run that gauze. Yeah. Okay. My Hell's Bay, as long as no more than half of it's out of the water, right. I can run. Look for your crab traps. Okay, they're going to be running in. The, they're going to be basically in the deepest area. Now you do have to watch though, because now there may be a trap over here and a trap over here, and there may be a sandbar in between. Them. So you know you have to watch out for that. But if you can run, you know you can run your gauze where as long as those traps are submerged, you can run. But uh, but not necessarily this area. Any area. You know, you ease up there. That's why I say if you go on the outer bar or coming into uh, Little Cockroach or even down below, okay, if you come into the outer bar, bring you some binoculars. Ease up on that outer bar as far as you can. Take your binoculars and look inside there and see what's there. See where the holes are at. See where the troughs are running. Right. And that's going to give you an edge when you go in. It'll give you an idea of where to go and where to, what to work. This is another thing that I look for. I'm going to go over this real quick. Oh, any more questions? Okay. I depend on birds tremendously. A lot better than I depend on my electronics. Okay. I don't know if you're probably the same way. Yeah. They'll tell you where the fish are at. What I'm looking at, these birds are ibises. They've got a curved beak. Easiest thing to remember, curved beak, crustacean. Okay. So if they're going to eat crustaceans, they're going to eat crabs, they're going to eat shrimp, they'll eat a bait fish if the opportunity arises. But their main diet is crustaceans, okay? So if they're feeding in this area, what am I going to look for when I go back to this area fishing? Redfish. Redfish, sheep's head are going to be the main two things that I'm going to be looking for. And if I want to look for redfish and sheep's head, that's one of the places I'm going to go first. <coughs> This is a pointed beak, pointed beak bait fish. Their main diet is bait fish. So you can watch them, and I'll show you, we'll have more pictures later, but watch for these down low to the water. Pointed beak down low to the water, that means there's bait fish there. And if they're down here, now these are in the water, uh, this dusty spray, we were fly fishing. We was actually easing up the river, and I happened to look over to the side and saw these birds down close to the water. You couldn't see anything going on. I anchored there, and we watched them for a minute. And what would happen was you'd see them running this way, and then bait fish would shower right there. And then see them run over here, bait fish would shower right there. There was glass minnows there. And we caught six snook right there on the fly rod. Another thing you want to watch, these are, these are ibis, curved beak, crustacean. They're actually out here, what they're after out here is blood worms and crabs. So what, what's different about the rest of the flat? If they're concentrated in an area, when that water comes up and I can get in here, I'm going to watch this area and I'm going to work this area. Because that means there's crabs and stuff there, the redfish. So that's one of the places I'm going to target because they're not over here. And actually, when you get up there, you'll see that bottom's just a little bit different right there. And there's some reason and it's holding crabs. So I, this is where your binoculars come in. If you look at those birds, tell what kind they are. You're out here in the deeper water. This is just around the corner from uh, Broken Bridge. But if you're out here in this deeper water, then just go ahead and fish those holes. And then when you come back in, you know. And actually, you'd be sitting out here fishing this hole over this way because it's just out from 
from the broken bridge and you can sit there and catch redfish, you know, trout, a few snook down deep and then until they get up where you can get back in here. And I know a lot of this is maybe geared to, to shallower boats, but this is the way to learn the area. Go out at a negative tide, even if in your big boat, because then you know where not to go. You eliminate a lot of water, which is a key. You know, it's a key. Like you said, it's the best time to learn your water. The best time really to learn is. new water. Yep. If I'm going to a new place, I want to go out there. I went to Big Pine Key. I'd never fished there before in my Hell's Bay. I went down there. First thing I did was go out at low tide. Because I knew if I run aground, I was going to sit there. So I went out at low tide. Learned the area. But you learn it at low tide, you've got some options. If you learn it at high tide, you can get some serious trouble. <laughs> This bird, I'm not gonna pay. he's up in the trees. He's resting. He's relaxing. So that means nothing's there. If he was down here on these lower limbs, then I'd target this area right here because there's something there. And I'd sit there. What I'll do with these birds now, I don't, I'm not just going to run in there and start throwing bait or lure or whatever. I'm going to sit back and watch these birds for a few minutes. If you'll watch them, first of all, you see the way they're facing, so you know where the bait's coming from. If he was down on this lower limb, pointed this way, that means he's waiting for somebody to push some bait fish up to him, let him skip up to him, easy meal. So what I want to do, I want to ease up here just as far away as I can still reach that area. Okay, when I put my calf fly fishing, whatever, they've got, I already know the range that they can cast to. So when I ease up here, I'm going to put them at the outer limit of their range. First of all, as a guide, that keeps them out of the trees. But second of all, I don't want to get in any closer to these fish than I have to. I want to stay just as far away, especially in the winter. you got winter time, clear water, spooky fish. Okay, So I want to stay back as far as I can and work my way in. So I'll ease up in there just where I can barely, and I'm going to start casting up over here. I'm going to upstream and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work my lure slowly down to where it's right underneath that bird and then work it past him. But that's, I'm going to start upstream from that bird and work that whole area because these fish, the bait's coming here, so these fish are laying up in this area and, and possibly under the bird pushing that bait up. There are nice squirrels in there? Any questions? What's that? There are nice squirrels in there where I can catch them with them? No, bait. no. There's a bunch of them at my place. But yeah. They're in the oak trees. Yeah. <laughs> my limit on my boat is no further than eight foot high and no further than three foot deep. If you stay within that range, I can get it out of the trees. <laughs> <laughs> I always catch the trees. <laughs> well, you know, as a young man, I was really fortunate. I had a bunch of old timers took me out and taught me fishing. Yeah. And uh, the guy that taught me to snook fish more than any of them, he said, son, if you're never hooked up, you're never fishing in the right place. He said, you've got to be hooking trees, mangrove stumps, dock there once in a while. He said, are you ready? getting close enough? If you do your homework, it'll pay off. I hope I'll give you all a few tips here. that will help you all to read the water. My philosophy is get on the water, bend the rod. Best time to go fishing is when you get a chance. <laughs> all right. Another you know trick. I do want to go over a few things here real quick. Um, we have time. We still have time, don't we? You're good. Okay. I did this last night. We were geared to fly fishing. Tonight I'm going to gear this. This is actually uh, this spin fishing. This is what these are about three, four rigs that I'm going to use probably 80% of the time from now until spring. And I'll even use these in springtime. But this, okay, I'm going to be throwing. Now this is a DOA, but I normally throw a root beer bass assassin. I only have two colors of bass assassin. One's called a drunk monkey, which is a root beer color. And then the other one is white. It's only two I need. That don't, don't normally have a chartreuse tail. Now what I do is I rig them upside down with the belly up. I get a better flutter out of this tail. If I rig it that way. Um, I don't know, I put a 
non-slip loop on there, which if uh, what we do knots one night, that might be a good thing. But I put a non-slip loop is a 95% knot, okay, so it's a lot stronger than a clinch knot. Plus, it allows that lure, I use this in flies too, it allows that lure to move around a lot more, get a lot more action out of that. If I'm back in, like I told you, go back in those places where I'm in there an hour before anybody else, where it's a foot deep, eight inches deep, I'm just going to put a circle hook. A circle hook, a split shot about six inches up, and hook it through the nose just like I would. Don't hook it in the body. Hook it through the nose just like I would a chub, tiger chub. Reason being, if that fish, most fish, are going to take a bait fish head first. All right? He takes that bait fish head first, hook's going to lay down right beside him and go right in. If it's buried, you know, you, you got a little, little, little more odds of not hooking up. And then, whenever you're fishing with these circle hooks, do not jerk the rod. All you want to do is reel. We do a thing in fly fishing where we call strip strike. Mm -hmm. you just keep stripping it until you feel that fish. When you feel that fish, you let him take up the last little bit of slack. And then you set the hook and pull the rod to the side. I do that same thing with spin fishing, fishing on my boat. All I want you to do is just keep reeling that thing. If you feel him hit it, give him a little turn of the, give a little turn of the crank. That'll, that'll bring that circle hook up. Catch him in the side of the mouth. If you pull it hard, it's going to come right back out. Then when you hook him up, put that rod to the side. If you will fight that, keep the rod, I use a, a rule of 45 degrees. If you keep that rod less than 45 degrees away from that fish, you're fighting him with the butt. You can tire that fish out a lot quicker, get him to the boat quicker, release him faster. He has a better survival rate. I know a lot of people have the wrong idea about us captains. We're out there slaughtering fish. Our kids keeping these fish alive. All right. Now you see a lot of them on the, on the programs where they got the rod up like this. They're fighting the fish. That's all for TV. All right. I do not want people in my boat with the rod higher than their head when they're fighting the fish. And if you fight him to the side, he runs to the left, you pull to the right. He runs to the right, you pull to the left. You'll tire him a lot quicker, get him to the boat quicker, and it will not tire you out as well. You feel them a lot better, you keep a slack out. If you make a long cast, and this is not necessarily inshore, but more offshore, but if you make a long cast, and especially with fly fishing, but even spin fishing, and that fish runs straight back at you, drop that rod tip in the water. Don't be up here doing this number. First of all, it's gonna wrap around the rod tip. Put that rod tip in the water. What'll happen is, the fish will drag that line behind him. Keeps tension on the hook. I pitch all my barbs of all barbless hooks. As long as you keep tension on the hook, they will not throw the hook. So if he runs straight at you, drop that rod in the water. He has to drag it behind you. Another key, if you, go ahead. You were saying about the white, you only have two lures, the white one and the root beer. No, only two colors. Two colors, that's okay. yeah. two colors. Do you use the white on the clear and the dark on the dark water? Normally, I tend to do that. normally, yeah, okay. yeah, and red, and for redfish, I hardly use anything but the drum monkey. Okay. I don't care what color of water, it is. but yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if you get it, and if you, I carry it because if I get in the outside and I get some little bit, you know, pinfish, white bait out there, happen to get into them, then I've got a white bait to throw. So it's kind of, it's kind of like a mental thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark, dark water, dark lures. Yeah. Okay. Um, I had a picture on earlier of my son. He was caught, we caught snook up the river. We threw purple and black bomber. Tarpon I call purple and black fly. 